Ask the Messengers, the program that deals with substance abuse, real people telling real stories. Where there is addiction, there is a chance for recovery. We're trying to help save lives on Ask the Messengers. On this week's episode, our topic is addiction and recovery within the LGBTQ community. Also want to talk about Recovery Centers of America, which is a national organization that's designed all over the world to help people who are seeking and trying to stay in recovery. And we have Denny Carice with us today. She's going to tell you what she does for the organization. And later, we were a guest on the TCT Today Show on the TCT Network. And we will share that interview with you on this show. The Ask the Messengers TV show begins now. So first, let me welcome you to the show, Miss Danny. Thank you, Tina. All right, so let's talk about Recovery Centers of America. First of all, let me tell you how I found you guys. So let me tell people, Twitter and hashtags work. <laughs> Twitter and hashtags work. I was just searching through Twitter, looking for some content, and there it was. So tell us about Recovery Centers of America. When did it start? What is it really all about? And then what do you do for them? Yeah, the um, CEO, Brian O'Neill, and I and a small group of folks founded Recovery Centers of America back in about 2014. Um, what we wanted to do was look at the science of what works and what doesn't work in treatment. And we wanted to look also at aspects that not many places look at, like customer service aspects, um, you know, and, and to put together a program based on what we know from customer service and the science that would have the highest likelihood of helping people get into recovery and stay in recovery. So we opened up our first site um, in Mays Landing, New Jersey in 2016, and we now have nine uh, residential campuses, which have detox, residential, intensive outpatient, outpatient, alumni, family programs, um, all through them. And then we have another uh, nine satellite outpatients, including opioid treatment programs. June is uh, dedicated to Pride Month. Now, within June and Pride Month, a lot of times people just think of pride festivals, pride parties. Uh, they think of all the other sides of pride, you know, allies, the flag, the whole nine yards. So how do you celebrate or bring out Pride Month? Right. So we have celebrations at all of our programs for Pride Month. Um, you know, the LGBTQ community and some people add, you know, other initials to that or whatever. I think the most important thing is that we're respectful to the, the acronym and the words people want us to use. You know, not whether we have it exactly right in terms of the inclusiveness of, of every possibility. Right. right. Um, so the. Uh, and this is a group that, that faces incredible discrimination uh, that has an uphill battle in many ways that's more likely to have a drug or alcohol problem. So at RCA, we celebrate Pride Month by celebrating those staff and those um, alumni and those patients who um, identify as being part of that community in different ways based on which site you're looking at. But uh, a couple of our sites have very specific intensive programs for the LGBTQ community. Um, in other, at other sites, we don't have the staffing that I feel like we can say we have a full program, um, but we celebrate it across all of our sites. Well, before we wrap up this segment, is there anything that you could share that would like what we call a hope shot. Can you give a hope shot, a word of encouragement or something to someone out there who may be contemplating, you know, with the LGBTQ community just to make them feel welcome, make them feel worthy, you know, because that's the thing, the, the mental, the whole, everything that's compiled together. So what, if somebody wanted to just, what would you say to somebody watching right now who's in that frame in that mind space. Right. Well, you know, the thing is, I think that the that folks and individuals in the LGBT community know that they're worthy. They just are told by the rest of us on a repeated basis that they are not, you know, so realize that's our problem and they, you know, need to, they don't need to, but, you know, we need to learn, the, the greater community needs to learn um, to be, you know, kinder and more understanding. But what I would say is anybody who's struggling with a drug and alcohol problem can get well 
And whether you've had two treatments before or 10 before, you are even more likely to get well and just find a place that really fits for you and feels right for you. And I have no doubt that you'll have the equal success rates of anybody else. So are you going out tonight? I can't. My parents say I have to be home right after work. <sighs> That's so gay. Totally gay. Oh, that is so Emma and Julia. Why are you saying that's so Emma and Julia? Well, you know, when something is dumb or stupid, you say that's so Emma and Julia. Who says that? Everyone. Imagine if who you are were used as an insult. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Stay tuned for more of Ask the Messengers. Hi, my name is Artesia Washington. And I'd like to welcome you to Irvine Newell Rehab, where we help you reach your goals of rehabilitation. So you ask, why choose Irvine? Now here at Irvine, we offer physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, counseling, aquatic therapy, and massage therapy. And we help build you back to your previous level of functioning. Give us a call, 248-415-2500, www.irvinenewellrehab.com. I'm Wayne County Treasurer Eric Sabree, encouraging all taxpayers to please take advantage of the several payment options available. You can pay online by visiting the Wayne County Treasurer's Office website. Paying online is easy and convenient. You can also download the mobile app and pay with your smartphone. You can pay at one of 70 kiosks located throughout Wayne County. And yes, you can always still send in your payments using the U.S. Postal Service. If you have to visit our office in person, you must make an appointment by going to treasurer.waynecounty.com. It only takes a few minutes. Facial covering or mask is required and social distancing is observed. Your health and safety is very important to us. You can also email our office at taxinfo at waynecounty.com or call us at 313-224-5990. Underage drinking is responsible for more than 4,300 deaths of youth annually. DWIHN, along with its provider partners, strive to educate young people on the deadly dangers of alcohol use and abuse. We teach youth about the dangers of drinking, especially when driving. If you are looking for resources to share with your loved one, give the Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network a call 24-7-800-241-4949. Here to talk, here to help. More than 2.5 million Americans are addicted to opioids. The addiction is sometimes developed through the improper use of prescription painkillers. Using prescribed medication in ways or amounts not intended by a doctor is very dangerous. So it's important that unused prescriptions are properly disposed of. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction or for more information about prevention, treatment, and recovery services or how to properly dispose of medication, contact the Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network 24-7-800-241-4949. Here to talk, here to help. And now take a look at the interview that we recently had with TCT Today's host, Tom Nolan, on the TCT Ministries. Right now I want to introduce today's guest, and we know that substance abuse is a widespread problem in this country. Tina Nelson is the producer of Ask the Messengers, a Detroit-based television program dedicated to helping those bound by addictions. She's here to tell us about her show and the tremendous impact it's having in providing those with a substance abuse problem, a means for recovery. Please welcome Tina Nelson. How are you doing today? I am fine. Thank you so much. First time in TCT Ministries, I would like to first, on behalf of everyone at the Ask the Messengers TV show, I want to thank you for inviting us to be a guest on your show. And I just want to give you a little factoid. Uh, this is kind of a full circle moment. We always talk about how God just takes you and brings you back. Our first four episodes were actually filmed at the TCT uh, station when it was here in Detroit. So I kind of feel right at home. Well, that's awesome, and it's good to have you on now. And I do want to uh, ask you a little bit about what you're doing through the, the program and the difference you're making. But I know we have a, a trailer, so I think that'll be the best way to just kind of introduce our audience. So let's watch this clip from Ask the Messengers. I've tried suicide because there were times that I didn't want to get high but didn't know how to stop. I could just remember walking up a street and just wanting to just run out in front of a bus. Couldn't tell nobody about it. The fear of being judged because I had been judged all my life, you know? 
And um, that was scary, you know, because I actually I'm standing at the bus stop waiting on a bus to come up any street. I just want to jump out in front of it. I think part of the thing that kept me from doing it was my children. Ask the Messengers is a 30 minute TV program that focuses on substance abuse, prevention and recovery. Utilizing substance abuse and recovery professionals providing their expert opinions. It never affected my family. It was just worried about. It. Do you still see him? Right now, I did. I call him right now. They'd be here. Mm -hmm. Well, I got one son. I haven't seen him about five years. Whew. Wow. It's tough. If you could say something to your son right now, look into that camera and say something to him. I love you, son, and I want to see you. I don't recommend young people start smoking a lot of pot. It didn't do a lot of good for me when I was a kid, so, uh, you know, I wouldn't recommend it. The more information you can get out to police officials, to school officials, to parents and everyone, the better it is. But I think the problem is everybody knows it's a problem, but nobody necessarily wants to acknowledge it or do something about it. One of the things that's really important to us is getting those substances out of houses before people that are addicted to them or thinking about using them can get to them. So we offer a, a drop-off box in our lobby that anybody can come in and use and drop off uh, expired or unwanted medications. But what I found is I still had it down the wrong road <laughs> and I, I made some choices that led to my addiction to drugs and alcohol. But I was so glad that even when I got way out there, that there was treatment and recovery. In your professional opinion, what would you say to a parent or to a teen who's facing uh, the, the circumstance that we face in our community today? The first thing I would say, pastors, number one, prevention starts when parents sit down with their children. That's wow. absolutely incredible. And um, Tina, one thing uh, that I loved about that video was we all have heard about the problems with uh, drug addiction. We, we hear about the issues. We, we know it's a problem in our society, but I think it's one of those issues that we'd rather uh, just sweep under the rug. We don't wanna uh, see the reality of addiction. And uh, you're not just, uh, talking with, of course, you were talking with government officials, but not just them. You're going out into the streets and actually uh, talking to, to people that are uh, in, in the middle of uh, addiction. So talk a little bit about some of the, the stories you share uh, through this program. Well, thank you again for having us on the show. The thing that's most important about our show, it is so important, as you said, addiction affects everyone. No one is dismissed. It is one of the only things that hasn't have any, it's not racial, it's not discriminatory. It will get anybody at any economic, sociological, it hits every aspect in some form or another. If you did a survey on your block, one out of every other home, there is an addiction or substance use disorder that happens within the home. And going out into the streets gives us the opportunity to show People who come on our show that share what we call real people, sharing real stories. You know, everybody's not in the streets, on the streets. As you see, there are people that are sitting in ivory tower executives. They're ministers. So, and, and, and uh, you never know who is addicted. But the point of it is our show gives the opportunity to take someone's, it's nothing greater when you could take your mess and turn it into a message. But you have to take that first step. And that's what we try to bring through the actual person who's right there in the throes of addiction to the person who shares their story when they came out of addiction. They take their, we've taken their mess and we've taken it and turned it into a message that gives, it shares experience, gives strength, 
and give hope to those who just feel hopeless and just feel like there's no, no, no way out. And that's what I love about this show, because it does empower people to have some hope. It gives them some realities. You know, when you flick the channel and you hear that story, there's nothing greater than hearing someone else's story. It's other people's stories that gives us like, that's me. I can identify with that. Oh, my God. If they did it, I can do it, too. You know, everybody's telling me I can't. I can't. I'm even telling myself I can't. All I want to do is get high, get high, get high. But there's hope if you want it. And that's what Ask the Messengers does every single week. We bring you experience. We bring you strength. We bring you hope from the real people who share their real stories. Wow, that's incredible, and it is so important uh, to offer uh, hope. Uh, share with us some of the stories that you've uh, seen going out there and, and, and talking with people. Well, for example, in the, in the piece that you showed, the young lady who just shared the story about, you know, wanting to get hit by a bus. Can you imagine? She's just feeling so out of it that just roll me over, just take me out of my misery. But she, she didn't get hit. She's here to share the story. She's doing well today, you know? And like the young man, now those stories are what we call the old cast corridor, Mac and uh, the down in the throes of where, what we used to call cast corridor. Anybody from Detroit would understand that. And that's where the majority of the people would end up being that were strung out or on major drugs. But right across the street from where we filmed that is a, is a uh, help center. So, you know, it's right there, right there, right there. But, it's, you know, as far as the, the young man who was sharing the story about his son, he's out there in the streets, but he knows that his son still loves him, but he's just not ready to give it up yet for his own whatever personal reasons. But we don't wow. give up on him. We just go out there, our street reporter. Uh, one thing I will say, the show came about from our executive producer who was once in addiction he uh, used to own what was a real popular club in Detroit called Studio 54, and that's where his addiction began. Then he got out of addiction. He found recovery. He's good. He's clean and sober over 30 years. And many years later, he got a word from God, hey, start a TV show about addiction and recovery. And he's like, I don't know anything about no TV show. And he just threw it away. God came back to him a second time. Hey, I told you, do that TV show. And he's like, I don't know how to do another show. He said the third time it hit him. And he said, okay, God, I'm going to do this. And gratefully, we are here going into five years this September. Because he once was out there in the streets. Then he found his way out. He answered the call of God. And now I'm sitting here sharing with you. And our street reporter, our street reporter has over 25 years in recovery. That's the young lady that you see in the streets. So she could go, like she always says, I know me when I see me because she's been there. She's done that. She's done all the research to substance abuse and how to stay clean, 25 years. And me, but I, I've never been strung out on any uh, drugs per se, but I, I, being with the show, I realized I had a drinking problem. You know, I was social. I was a functional, you know, drinker. But I decided because how listening to these stories and hanging, you know, you become who you flock with. Right. Birds of a feather flock together. You know, that old adage. So I took a good look at the woman in the mirror and said, you know what? You need to put that beer. You need to put that wine. You need to put that drink down. It's time to live a good quality life, too, because my mess now is someone's message. And when I'm putting those shows together on the producer side, it's a ministry. I feel it. Every time when those stories are, when I'm behind that camera and I'm hearing those stories, I cry so many times. You know, I'm crying now because I know that people can get right. People can get well. And that's what God wants for us. Right. That's what he wants for us. So that's our that's my take. Wow, that is uh, incredible. And I think uh, just what you're doing to uh, show people uh, what 
the problem is out there, as well as the uh, segments you have that are uh, teaching people what uh, type of help and, and what type of solutions are out there is great. But uh, being so involved in this, uh, share with our, our viewers what you feel um, maybe some of the uh, solutions are. Uh, we, we may never get rid of all addiction, but I think that just the levels we uh, see it at right now, what can we be doing as a society or maybe what can parents be doing to, to keep their children uh, from getting into addiction? That is a very good question. It's all about prevention. That's where it starts. And it needs to start early because a lot of our testimonies, a lot of the stories that we're told, they will say, oh, I started drinking or I, start, I started first as drinking. I started drinking when I was nine years old or I smoked a joint when I was 12. It's all about prevention. And, and that's the reason why we have um, resources on the show, because someone needs to reach out and get help for their child who is behaving in a manner because now they're in high school, they're hanging out with their friends, they're vaping, they're smoking weed. Weed is legal, so they think it's cool, but weed is a gateway to something far worse that could take you in a hole that you will have a hard time to get out if you get out. So it's really about prevention. We have to talk about it. I, we had a young lady on our show. She was a product of human trafficking. And her story is so beautiful. And what she said is she recovers out loud. When she says she recovers out loud, that means she shares her story about where she's been and where she is right now. Because where you've been is not where you have to stay. You know, that becomes your rearview mirror to your journey somewhere past that darkness that you're in. We all fall in a dark. That's word of God. We all fall in some, we all fall short of the glory of God. But guess what? If we open our mouths, ask, knock, those doors will become open. We have to talk. We have to be open. We have to be transparent. We have to stay on the ground. We have to show up to our politicians. We have to show up to those town hall meetings. Hey, this is happening in my neighborhood. What are you going to do about it? You have to take onus for your own block. And if we do it block by block, two, three houses on one block at a time, you never know what the outcome will be. No, you're not going to save everybody. Jesus didn't either. But those that chose, those that chose, those that do, you know the reward on that. Wow. Well, Tina Nelson, thank you so much for sharing with us today, and thank you for uh, everything uh, you're doing to make a difference and through this program. And I want to uh, encourage our viewers to find out more. The website is askthemessengers.org, and uh, just encourage people to check it out, uh, get involved, and find out more. Thank you so much for being with us today. God bless you. Thank you again for having us, and we truly, truly appreciate you. And just know, Recovery is possible. Recovery is possible, but you gotta take the first step and you gotta live one day at a time. Recovery is possible. This is the face. This is what it looks like. Amen, thank you again so thank much. You. We'll be right back with more of Ask the Messengers. I'm Wayne County Treasurer Eric Sabri, encouraging all taxpayers to please take advantage of the several payment options available. If you have to visit our office in person, you must make an appointment by going to treasurer.waynecounty.com. It only takes a few minutes. Facial covering or mask is required and social distancing is observed. You can also email our office at taxinfo at waynecounty.com or call us at 313-224-5990. Underage drinking is responsible for more than 4,300 deaths of youth annually. DWIHN, along with its provider partners, strive to educate young people on the deadly dangers of alcohol use and abuse. We teach youth about the dangers of drinking, especially when driving. If you are looking for resources to share with your loved one, give the Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network a call 24-7-800-241-4949. Here to talk, here to help. 
More than 2.5 million Americans are addicted to opioids. The addiction is sometimes developed through the improper use of prescription painkillers. Using prescribed medication in ways or amounts not intended by a doctor is very dangerous. So it's important that unused prescriptions are properly disposed of. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction or for more information about prevention, treatment, and recovery services or how to properly dispose of medication, contact the Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network 24-7-800-241-4949. Here to talk, here to help. If you or someone you know is battling with any type of cancer, you need to read the book by Laverne Moore Slaughter. God encounters are real. In her book, she tells how through prayer and faith, God healed her and set her free from stomach cancer. For more information and to get your copy, visit www.encountersareal.net. I can do this. We believe in you. Every day, millions of people celebrate recovery from addiction and mental illness while others begin their journey. Be a part of it. Join the Voices for Recovery. Together, we are stronger. For confidential information and treatment referral for mental and substance use disorders, call 1-800-662-HELP. Again, we'd like to thank our guest, Dr. Denny Carice of the Recovery Centers of America. For more information about Recovery Centers of America, visit their website, recoverycentersofamerica.com, and you can also call their 24-7 helpline at 844-862-3463. And we also like to, again, thank the TCT Ministries for inviting us to be a guest on their TCT Today show with the with their host Tom Nolan. Well, that concludes this week's episode of the Ask the Messengers TV show. We hope something you heard today helped you in some way to understand addiction and to give anyone struggling the desire to surrender and seek help. If you or someone you know is experiencing anything that seems to be too hard to handle, please know there is a way out and don't hesitate or be afraid to seek help. Until next time, may you seek a power greater than yourself so that you too can turn your mess into a message that will help save lives. Continue to stay safe and most importantly, be kind and love one another. Won't you help us to do exactly what our motto is, and that is to help save lives. Won't you send a generous donation to the information there on the screen? We would love to have you as part of our partnership to help save lives. Uh, you may not be able to go out in the street, you may not be able to go come here to the show, but you can send your donation that helps us save lives. Mm -hmm.